be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with Jesus when was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger into the nail marks, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and put your hand and bring your hand and put it into my side. And do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now, Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book. But these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. John's Gospel, which is the last of the Gospels written, at least that we have recognized, is unique in its presentation in the sense that John is not so much detailing the events from Jesus' life as he is explaining the meaning of Jesus' life and its impact on the world at large. And one of the places that I think you can go to find uh, the best of what I would consider to be that presentation or that explanation is actually in the Last Supper. As we know, John's Gospel does not record the institution of the Eucharist as the other synoptics do, but has uh, two critical events. One, the washing of the feet of the disciples, that sense of service as the essential ministry of Jesus. But then following that, in chapter 17, there is the explanation that Jesus gives in what's called the last discourse, the explanation of the events that will be taking place as he in a sense, tries to prepare the disciples uh, for what will be occurring in the, in the coming hours. And then he goes from the last discourse, he goes to priestly prayer, the great priestly prayer, where he prays to the Father that all may be one. I think that when you look at John's Gospel, 17 is the best way to understand this particular selection of the gospel that's presented to us on uh, the second Sunday of Easter. Jesus, in those last moments, talks about mercy, the great mercy of God, which will be manifested in the giving of the Spirit. And in the giving of the Spirit, 
all will be made one. In a sense, the point being that through the gift of the Spirit, God will recreate the face of the earth. God will open up a door to a future that is beyond our comprehension. And so when Jesus comes on the night of the resurrection and comes to the disciples who are still in a state of fear, a fear that represents not merely the environment of the disciples on that night, but represents human history. For in reality, we have lived in fear for our entire history, a fear of walking into the new. And as a result of that, we have created what can best be described in human history as a merciless world, a merciless world in which blood and the shedding of blood, the oppression, and all of the isms that go along with that are our history. That's who we have become. That's who we are. Fear. A fear of walking into God's new day. And so Jesus comes in the midst of them. And the first thing he does is he greets them. Peace be with you. Well, they knew. When they heard those words, it was the greeting of Shalom. It was the introduction of a new day. For it was the messianic greeting that he was giving them. It isn't just, hello, how are you? It's nice to be with you here. It was the messianic greeting. His way of announcing that God's new day had emerged and that they need not be fearful. And then he breathes on them and says, receive the Holy Spirit. Come into God's life for the new day, the new moment in history, the new opportunity is the opportunity of living together in God. That takes away the fear. Because in living together in God by the power of the Spirit allows me to see the face of another human being. And it allows me to engage in the mercy of God which has been shown me and I now can show to another. Because the mercy is the uncompromising love of God manifested in our actions. And you see that in the first reading, how dramatically different the life of the people had become. Some say it's an idealism. I say it's the new day. It's the invitation. It's the challenge that God lays before us by saying, be one in me, be part of my life, and then live that, live that reality, yeah? the reality of our oneness in God by the power of the Spirit. Certainly in this moment in time, as we are living through these unprecedented days, uh, this pandemic and everything, we're seeing, strangely enough, and hopefully, we're seeing manifestations of that. We're seeing that in those who work in the medical field. No distinctions. Everybody is affected. Many of us wheeled into the emergency rooms. And nobody asks you when you get to the emergency room, oh, let's look at the color of your skin or language or where you come from or what's your background. But what they do 
is they gather around you and they say, oh, let's take your blood pressure. Let's check your oxygen level. Let's see how you're breathing. Let's care. Let's show you care and concern. In a sense, those in the medical field, in a particular way, those in the nursing homes and in those uh, care facilities are basically showing us the new way. And they're doing that by putting themselves at risk yeah? because in a sense, they're offering their life in service of those of us who are in need. What a great example. And it's always an example that strikes me that comes out in moments of tragedy, uh, in moments of, of great struggle. We've seen it in the wars. We've seen it in the other times of great illness. We've seen it in the natural disasters that have taken place. It seems that in those moments, the spirit takes over and the spirit strengthens and guides us and gives us the courage to go beyond the normal and to live the extraordinary, which is literally to live in God, by God, and for God. Let us pray that on this Sunday of divine mercy, this second Sunday of Easter, in the midst of these difficult days and challenging days, that we devote ourselves to living the new way.